Everybody, welcome to another episode of The Vile Files. I am your host, Nick, sitting here in sunny California today. And uh, I'm with Chrissy, who's got her Charlie Brown Christmas tree behind her. In I the, do. Uh, well, it also appears to be sunny Montana. Is it sunny uh, Montana? I have to say it just stopped snowing, so that's amazing. But I do go for my coffee and this like I'll walk in like 18 degrees to go get coffee every morning, a couple, bunch of blocks. So, well, I hope you have enjoyed uh, this week of uh, Bachelor content. It's been heavy. it's a fun week. It's the Justin Long week plus yeah. some extra Bachelor because we have one Noah from the Bachelorette with us today um to talk about uh, his experience he, he was very honest gentleman shared a lot of behind the scenes uh was pretty honest with his assessment about you know all the guys Tasha, the relationships left on the show but we also learned a lot about him a lot of things that i don't think we got to see like you know about him about the way he thinks about sex about the way he thinks uh way he works on the front lines and other things that he does so i think it's interesting yeah if it's you haven't had the pleasure of um, listening to uh, Justin Long and I break down these two episodes of The Best Rut, I suggest you do that before you dive into Noah yeah, because it's gold. And then even better is, well, personally, I think it's better. The Ask Nick with Justin Long. Uh, Justin um, was probably my favorite guest is from the I mean, I've had some good ones in terms of helping with the Ask Nick, but he contributed so much. To the conversation and uh it was a lot of fun to have them and i think you guys will really enjoy it so if you love listening to people talk about their dating situations and problems and having a, a couple of uh, middle-aged men break it down it's the episode <laughs> you won't want to miss so we have noah coming up uh truthfully i actually wanted to have noah and Bennett. I wanted to do like yeah. a 45 minute interview with Noah and a 45 minute Bennett uh, with interview with Bennett. I was told that he wasn't available. I suspect that N Bennett declined because, well, I don't know why, but I suspect it's because I've been hard on him and he probably doubted his ability to maybe respond to some tough questions. I don't know without the uh, ability to without edit. being prepared, perhaps. Uh, just know that uh, uh, while I have been critical of Bennett, it's n me wanting to give him the, the uh, uh, an opportunity to explain himself was offered to him. I really wanted to ask Noah uh, Bennett, sorry, about apologies and his lack, uh, his lack of his ability to do it. I tweeted the uh, last Wednesday that Harvard never taught Bennett that I'm sorry I made you feel that way is not an apology. Interestingly enough, there yeah. are a handful of people on Twitter who disagree with me. A lot of people saying that uh, I'm sorry I made you feel that way. They thought is his apology. Where, you know, it's like the worst apology you can make is I'm sorry you feel that way. That's clearly yeah. not an apology. But I'm sorry I made you feel that way is not much better because... How is yeah. it different, really? Well, it's all? different because you are at least acknowledging that you did something to make them feel a certain way, right? Okay. But when you apologize and 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 then involve their feelings into your uh, attempt at an apology, you're yeah. putting the onus on their feelings, and then feelings can be interpreted. So, like, if you're you're, it's like, it's acknowledging that you're part of it, like an accident. It's like, oh well, I you know I'm twenty percent responsible because I was there. But when you acknowledge someone's feelings in your apology, you're basically saying, like, I can't control how you interpret something. Maybe a less, you know, sensitive person might feel differently. Maybe a less uh, complicated person might feel differently. But I did this, and that's how you interpreted it, so I'm sorry. That's not an apology. You, you no, when it's you not an When apology. you refer to someone's feelings in your apology, you, that there's a blame there. And that it is their feelings because feelings can be interpreted a certain way. There's not, the only apology is like focusing on your actions and not their feelings. And so anyone who thinks that I'm sorry I made you feel that way is an apology. Well, it is not. And, and if you. It makes me angry. 
Really? That kind of apology makes me angry. Maybe I'm too sensitive, but that kind of apology makes me angry. Well, it's not an apology because it. No, it's also like putting it back on that other person. Because if, some, yeah, if someone says, I'm sorry I made you feel that way, you are acknowledging yeah. your actions. But again, you are basically. So then people don't hear You're that. You're basically just like, saying the person's feelings well, are just like, so I, not to be accounted for. Well, no, not. No, you're accounting for their feelings, but you're you're telling them that their feelings could change. What's like, well, yeah. wait, so it's how I feel about this is the problem. Like, well, because you know what I'm saying? If you feel a certain way, you can feel differently. People interpret all sorts of feelings. And so I wanted to ask Bennett about that. I was, because a lot of people agree with them and I wanted to f offer him the opportunity to let him know that people agree with him and then see if he, I, I just wanted to see if he was a character or not, but he declined or I think he declined. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure he declined. I don't feel like that men tell all did him any good. I honest. think it did everything Bennett wanted it to do. I agree. Maybe. Yeah. Anywho, we uh, will get Noah's take on the uh, tell all uh, next. One last thing. Holidays are fast approaching. If you're looking for some last minute Christmas Christmas ideas for yourself or a friend, Vile Files has merch. So check out vilefiles.com. Hoodies, sweatshirts, breakup books, hoodies, hats, masks. We have it all. Support the show. Really. Noah, how's it going? It's uh, it's going good. Great, it's going good. Great. Where are day. where are you these days? Um, so right now I'm in Colorado. When I'm you say a... right now, so like you don't, you're not, you don't live in Colorado. You're, are no, you... so I'm from Oklahoma originally, Tulsa, Oklahoma, but I do travel nursing, so I I kind of bounce around a bit. Um, Pre-show, I was doing a COVID contract in California, COVID ICU, uh, and now I'm doing an covid icu contract in uh colorado and you know my twin lives out here so i'm getting to see him and uh you know work out here oh well we're gonna we'll get into more of of no in a bit but let's just kick it off and uh get into the show and get your thoughts and feelings on all things uh your experience in the bachelorette so uh the the men tell all uh definitely uh an interesting one this year I got to give props to uh, to Chris Harrison because that must have been was that was that obviously that was a pretty it was it was it an awkward setting just because usually they have a live studio audience right like kind of like how rose ceremonies you know when you watch it it has music in it and when as a viewer we're just like but it's just awkward and quiet in rose ceremonies I'm telling you it was so loud and chaotic that there was no time for awkward really just the guy yeah. everyone came guns just blazing? nonstop it. The people that maybe I feel like didn't say everything they wanted to say while they're on the show doubled down in the mental all. That's pretty typical. You know, everyone's trying to everyone's gunning for paradise. Well, there's usually more contestants, too. Right. At that point. Yeah. Like, there's, there's, yeah. Usually, yeah. There's only yeah. a few of us. Um, and obviously, there's still old tension and beef with me and Bennett. And Bennett's got his henchman, Ed. Uh, and then Kenny, who's. I knew Kenny would be, you know, coming in hot. I didn't expect to that level. I mean, he he doubled down. So, so Ed, I've been critical of of Ed <laughs> on this on this podcast. Just a scotch. You have to. Uh, no, he's and he I, I don't know, that. like, and 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 I almost I got, I got to the point where I felt a little bad because, as I've mentioned over and over and over, like I recognize that all of you, like, I don't know any of you people, right? Like, I get certain <laughs> glimpses of like, yeah, he's probably a dick in real life too, or. Or I find this person interesting, but I reserve all judgment for your personalities until I, if I ever meet you guys in person, right? But so I felt a little <laughs> bad for Ed, right? And and uh, and then he had to like just yeah, his, his arguments. He he was he seemed like Bennett's henchman. Is is that was he always was him and Bennett just kind of a a a, a pair during the season? Like were you surprised by that? No. So Ed, the funny thing is, even if you don't know Ed, when Ed got the Man Child Award, everyone knew he deserved that. He, he <laughs> you don't need to know him off the show for. Tell to know us that. why. Tell us why. I mean, because you forget how old Ed is. You're like, oh yeah, Ed. I mean, Ed's, Ed's in college. Ed? I think Ed's like late thirties. Okay. And but what, you'd like, never know. Why? You'd never know. You think Ed's like twenty three. Because. He's just a goofy, like, I mean, he's a man child. Ed's for sure a man child. And now, are, and I like Ed, but you just you, forget that he's like 
a grown adult. Give us an example. I mean, a lot of the stuff he says, it like he's still he's still a party boy. Ed's still Ed's still in Miami, um, you know, going out on the yachts with with uh, the freshman college chicks, and <laughs> then he's got to go home to work. You know, stays up all night, and then he's got to wake up and go to work in the morning. But if you only saw Ed, you'd be like. Oh, this guy's not a grown man. He's he's a man child. I mean, he just acts like you forget how old he is. And he's funny, but yeah, he's for sure a man child. And you ask about being a henchman on the show, he was Bennett's like right hand man. I mean, the whole time. It'd be it'd be Bennett and me going at it, and then out of the left corner, you just hear Ed yelling, like hear Ed's voice, and you look over there like, Ed, why are you talking right now? What do you have to say? And he would just back up everything Bennett has to say regardless. You said before we started recording that you spoke with Ed this morning on the phone. I did. I spoke with Ed this morning. Uh, who reached out to you? You know, so he, I saw Bachelor at ABC had posted um, something about Ed. Or just, it was some of the guys about the mental all. And all the comments were like, why did Ed have a glow up? And where did Ed get a neck? <laughs> um, and like, why am I attracted to Ed? Oh so it was God. really funny because, uh, yeah, we made fun of Ed because he looks like, you know, Johnny Bravo. And he's like, he's got no neck. He was always asleep. Um, so we always made fun of him for that. And then I said, dude, Ed, the, the tables are turning. The, the ladies like, you know, the people like you. Uh, so I called him just to check up on him because I, I mean, I do like Ed. He's funny. Um, him and I had our beef for quite a bit. And then he finally was like, I'm done with this. I'm getting out of this. It's getting too chaotic. And Bennett did not. Bennett doubled down, obviously. And when you when, when you say ben, Bennett doubled down, are you talking about like at the tell all or just like no in life general. outside of the show? Life so life outside of the show. What, what like you asked me talking to Ed, those guys that were ragging me the whole time, they're talking trash. You know, you'll see it in their interviews and everything. Now they want to be my best friends, and I'm like, all right, I don't yeah. care. I don't hold anything against anyone. I do think Bennett. You know, I told Bennett if he came, to, he brought his little smug face to Oklahoma to get smacked in the mouth. Like people in Oklahoma would not do well with Bennett just because yeah. we do don't you, talk to people like that. Do you want like, to like, fight you know, Bennett? It is what it is. Would you fight Bennett? <laughs> I'm not gonna, I wouldn't fight Bennett. It's not, it wouldn't be a fight. I'd feel bad at the end of it. Like I don't hate Bennett. I just think that Bennett is kind of funny. He's quirky, but he is like the man can be a prick. And I can't tell the stuff Bennett does, I genuinely can't tell if he's putting on a show or not after like outside of the show. Like, yeah, I, it, I have it, no idea. It's a, it's a good point. I honestly watching the, the tell all, um, yeah, you're not sure if you, he, he's putting on a show, right? I can't tell. And I've talked to him <sighs> for months. Um, for real. do you, I've said all along, I, uh, yeah, I've said all along that like, like I, you know, I liked Bet It, then I was like, eh, and I, I didn't like Bet It, and you know, from the show standpoint, and then I was just like, this guy's just kind of a nerd, and he just doesn't know it, and I'm, but I'm not sure if that. I is think a, he's more devious than that. You think? You think no, so? See, I, you th I'm not I, giving Ben enough credit here. I agree. Here. I agree. I so I the whole time, you know, Bennett would come at me, and I was like, dude, I don't want to be a part of this, and I started to like Tasha, so I'm like, nobody that's, that's in all the drama ends up well. They're fun and, you know, they're entertaining. But if you actually like the person, you're not going to go far. So I like was like, I'm trying to stay out of the drama. And, you know, I gave Bennett the benefit of the doubt. It's hard word to say in a row. But I gave him the benefit of the doubt thinking he just doesn't know. Like, he's just kind of clueless, which is funny why he, you know, gave me that EQ speech. Then I realized I'm like, dude, no, Bennett is calculated with what he does. He's not like a clueless nerd. The man is smart and the man's devious. And I think he knows exactly what he's doing. But it took me a long time to get to that point. Yeah, you said he was like meticulous in the way that he like plans it, which that scarf definitely says like he I'm meticulous is. in the way. I plan yeah, it. I mean, I the scarf. On yeah. our when we were going at it, they didn't show this, but I'm like Bennett, I apologize that you've lost nights of sleep over me. Like I should be <laughs> apologizing to you because you stay up all night thinking about what to say, doing all these little things. Like I'm sorry that you're so caught up on this, you know, but. He's meticulous. I mean, he's a devious guy. I don't, I, I still can't tell because I can't figure him out. <laughs> but I do think he's a lot more meticulous and, and intentional with what he does. 
There is nothing more satisfying than making lasting memories with the people you love. And people always say it's the thought that counts when it comes to great gifts. Well, StoryWorth is one of those great gifts that help you make lasting memories, and it's truly all about thought, right? What is StoryWorth? StoryWorth is an online service that helps your loved ones share stories through thought-provoking questions about their memories and personal thoughts. It's a fun new way to engage with family, especially those you can't see in person. Every week, StoryWorth emails your family members different story prompts, questions that you've never thought to ask, like, what's a small decision you made that ended up having a big impact on your life? And if you could see into the future, what would you want to find out? One of my greatest pastimes as a kid was hearing my aunts and uncles and my parents tell stories of their childhood. And this is a great way to learn about that and have a memory. And then after that, StoryWorth compiles all these stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that ships for free. A unique and fun, memorable, meaningful gift. Story worth is the thing for you to get. Give your loved ones the gift of spending time together wherever you live with Story Worth. Get started right away with no shipping required by going to storyworth.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Get $10 off your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash V-I-A-L-L for $10 off. I think being particular is a great thing and you want people to be snobs about things that you want to enjoy without them being dicks. You know, you yeah. don't want them to be snobby dicks. Press house coffee. Not pretentious. Not pretentious, but particular in how they make it and craft it because the people who make press house coffee are passionate about the coffee. One could say they're snobby and particular about the coffee. They don't come from that elitist culture that you sometimes find with your uh, coffee house baristas who no. just make you feel like insecure about just wanting a regular cup of coffee. They do all the work for you. Their signature blends like Dream Spot Espresso, Blueberry Muffin, so Tavern good. Blend, even Chill Wave for cold brews. Created with no added or artificial flavors, just carefully selected coffees from around the world. Plus, every bag is roasted to order. Ground yeah. any way you liked and shipped to you within 72 hours for peak freshness. You're not getting grounded things, you know, that were grounded weeks, months in advance that no, you know, they kind of package it for you it. and mm -hmm. send it. Uh, they package it right for you. Trust me. Order Press House Coffee for yourself and your coffee loving friends and family for the holidays. You'll even get 20% off if you go to our special URL right now at PressHouseCoffee.com slash V I A L. Don't wait. Go to PressHouseCoffee.com slash V I A L. What is, Which, what, to, if anything, what are your regrets? Uh, from the show um you know so when i when i leave the show um i pretty much put it all out there honestly i said that to taisha she said like you know it just didn't you weren't my person uh looking back i realized i took the high road with how i handled bennett you have no idea how hard it was not to just go off on bennett multiple times like Rip so, him a new, I could have buried Bennett. And when he came back, I could have ended Bennett. I think my only regret is not calling Bennett out for pulling the I love you card to save face. Like, so he didn't look like a Harvard douchebag. Like, oh yeah, that was that. Yeah. That's really one of my only regrets. But I also. So you like, think, time, so your, your regret is not going more for Bennett. It, it, so it's, it no, has it's not going more. It's just not like the stuff he was dishing out and the stuff he did. I was the first one to call him out anyways. Everyone knew that. Bennett's condescending at the house. Everybody knew that. They just didn't like. They're the ones that told me that. And I'm like, it's been going on for weeks. Nobody says anything. Like, I'm gonna call this guy out. So I was the one that called him out on it. But you know, then some of the stuff, some of his antics, I should have buried Bennett for, and I didn't. So I'm not gonna say it's my only regret because I did ch like choose what, to take what the high were road. Some of the antics that you feel like, I mean, the I love you. Obviously, we got to see. But were there things that we didn't get to see that Bennett was pulling? Um... What I saw from Bennett, because Bennett was in his own world eating his his prune juice and uh, kale sandwiches and like little smoothies every day. Nobody saw Bennett a lot. I'm going to be careful how I say this. Um, I'd rather you not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Bennett, I'll try to be careful how I say it, but I'm not going to say he's like, I want to like Bennett. I think everybody wants to like Bennett. But then when you take him for what he is, you're like, this guy does just have this elitist mentality. And... I honestly, I think I'm, I hate to break him down psychologically, but I honestly think he said he didn't grow up privileged and all these things. I think he just morphed into the exact person that he hated growing up. Like if you grew up not entitled, 
he's turned into the person that he hated, which is I'm at the top. Everyone's below me. And this elitist mentality on wall street. Do you know that to be true? Like, do you know anything about his childhood? No, I just know that I asked him to spell privileged. And, uh, I can't spell shit, man. He turned it into like, no, he brought it up to Tasha and said, Noah said I'm privileged. I grew up in a poor, I was told that he went to one of the most expensive private schools and things like that. I don't know anything about his life. I've, I haven't cared to look him so up. So you don't, you don't, you don't know. Okay. I have no idea. I just uh, know that if you take him for what he is, yeah, he he just thinks he's better than everybody. What what was uh, what was going on with Kenny at the tell all? Um, his outfit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm That's so what critical. I need to start I'm with. so bad. I feel Listen, bad. I'm from but I feel Tulsa, like everyone. Oklahoma, yeah. And people will get married in camo. That's not uncommon. It's not in Tulsa. Some of the smaller towns we will. You know, it is what it is. Dude, I wouldn't show up to the mental all in a camo outfit. And then for Kenny to call me a playboy for saying I'm doing all these things, I'm trying to get attention. Kenny shows up in a camo suit and Kenny's entire job is to party. Like he's a boy band manager. He's a knockoff One Direction boy band manager. You know, like he's telling me I'm a party boy. And then that's his entire Did existence. Did you get to know- is entertaining people and partying. Did- did you get to know Kenny at all in terms of like, what is a boy band manager in Chicago? Like, does that just like an, a, a, a seemingly <laughs> m- better name for like club promoter or, I mean, that's a serious um, question. I'm not I even trying to, to, no, I talked to him a bit. The The thing about Kenny is we both talk trash and ragging each other, but we both respect that we speak our minds. Uh, so like Kenny will rag me and like talk all this trash to me and then be like, yeah, man, let's go grab lunch. I'm like, all right, I can respect that. <laughs> like bygones be bygones. So like, I don't know what he actually does. I think he promotes this one boy band. I don't. So there's know. an actual band that he's like. I know they're not working right now though, because COVID. So he's got to use all that energy in the mental all to just double down. But Kenny on the mental all, I anticipated Bennett coming at me with all these sly remarks and all this stuff, and I anticipated Ed. Turns out Ed was asleep the whole mental all. Um, I did not anticipate Kenny like coming at people. At one point, Kenny stands up and yells, uh, like, shut the F up. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Kenny, you got out the first week I was here. Why are you yelling at me? Like, sit down. You weren't ha- didn't have any of this energy on the show. Where's this coming from? Yeah, he's just trying to get on Paradise. Yeah, I mean, that's how I felt with a lot of the guys. But you still, like, Chris Harrison was the mediator. And I would try to respond to all the stuff that Kenny and, and Ed and Bennett were saying. And I finally was like, Chris, like, if you if you guys want me to respond, I can respond. But I can't when Bennett's henchman and Ed is yelling random stuff that we can't even hear. And then Kenny's behind just belligerently yelling. Like, I can't respond to this. If you guys actually want to have a response, let me talk. And so Chris gave us, like, allotted, like, okay, you respond and you respond. And that worked for a little bit, but... It was just, I mean, it was so chaotic. Hmm. I heard a rumor, um, third party, <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> uh, that uh, not from Chris himself, so I can't confirm firsthand, but that your room was close to Chris's and that Chris Harrison thinks of you <laughs> like a son. Is that, can you confirm that? Is that true? Does Does Chris have a... Am, am I allowed to confirm this? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, during the I heard from a very reliable source, but I did not you hear You can only Chris. stay bottled up for so long. So I started breaking out of my room, truth be told. And unbeknownst to me, my roommate was Chris Harrison. So I'd be out by when the pool. When you say roommate, wife. like that you guys he shared a wall? He was across the pool. He yeah, was across okay. the pool. Gotcha. So that's why I showed up on set, like, so tan tanner than everybody i just been laying by the pool with chris harrison you know drinking champagne all day and turns out chris is super cool so they made a joke that like chris was my dad and actually when i leave i said like taisha i do think taisha is an awesome girl i said all these things like you know i hope it works out for you and my last words out the door was chris i love you and i walked out you know like it didn't work out for me and taisha but well what were some of the things you guys talked about poolside what was mostly golf mostly golf Midwest stuff, you know, mostly. Wait, We're talking it, about he, South stuff. Chris he's from Texas. From, he's from, but he went to he went to a school in Oklahoma. Yeah, that's right. He played soccer in Oklahoma or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it turns out, yeah, he was. He did kind of become my like close uncle or dad, if you want to call it. Have you spoken with Chris Harrison at all offline? Not at the mental all. Like, has is the relationship continuing to grow? 
listen, Chris is a popular guy. And uh, so, no, I mentioned him once in a golf, uh, golf uh, DM. This is before I was like verified and had followers and he responded, you know, surprised about that, but no, I haven't spoken to him. Uh, He's got too many big fish to deal with, you know? And I don't actually know if anybody um, post show actually likes me. I'm not sure. I haven't figured it out yet. I've been kind of busy. I haven't been able to check up on that. Are you talking about like production <laughs> or the, 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 the yeah. guys? How do you feel production. about your time on the show? Like, did you have fun? Like what, what, uh, like, because like, you know, everyone, you were accused of being the shit starter. You were there, like some people, probably even for some fans, I'm sure, or certainly the guys, like, because you came in late, you were just some sort of plant, right? You were there to stir up drama, um, and, and cause That's, a ruckus. Yeah. What, how do you, what, what, how do you respond to those, you know, accusations, whether it's from the guys in the house or, or people watching? Here, what I think is we saw it with Ed and a lot of the guys. Everybody's looking for somebody to blame. Yeah. Tasha sent me home. It's Noah's fault that I didn't get, you know, it's Noah's fault she didn't have a connection with me. I'm like, all right. People like, since I came in late and I came in pretty unapologetic and was, I said, I'll call things how it is. And, you know, that's, that is what it is. I had a lot of blame and a lot of targets on my back. Uh, the fact that people thought like I was working with production and doing all these things. No, I just, I came in when they already had this whole group, this, you know, Boy Scout group of uh, like loyalty based off of trauma from Claire. So I came in and I didn't really take no for an answer from the guys. Like they shut Spencer up, put him in a corner. Um, and I didn't really, I was like, I haven't done anything wrong. I've just targeted on my back for not doing anything wrong. Like they're going to dislike me as long as I, like, no matter what I do, unless I agree with them, they're going to dislike me. So I'm not going to like just, shut up and say yes ma'am yes sir to these guys who don't actually care for me i'm you know i'm here like for Tasha to see if it works out nothing like updating the photos that your parents have at their house for you so that they know how hot you're looking you don't want your parents to have old photos of you hanging around your house when their neighbors come over and they see your bad haircut you got two years ago no 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 update family and friends with the most current photos that you have with skylight frame Skylight Frame is a photo frame that you can update instantly by email from anywhere. A great way to feel close to those you love even when you're separated. It sets up effortlessly in under 60 seconds. Just plug it in. Use the touchscreen to connect to your wireless network and enjoy. Sending photos of Skylight is effortless. That's right. Everyone in your family can just email them to your personal Skylight email address and they'll pop up in seconds. Or you give someone else a frame and then you just send them pictures of you. Just like, bam, hey mom, here's me and my new boyfriend. And then when you break up with that person a week later, you can be like, (laughs) here's a picture of just me, right? Being lonely. And then a week later when you find someone else, you send them a new, new, new updated picture right in the frame. Mom, it's Ted. That's what every girl dreams of. 100% 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your Skylight, they'll offer you a full refund. You can preload it with your favorite photos for a personalized gift, important pictures of you and Ted. And then when you break up with Ted, it can be <laughs> <Bye> Ed. Ted. <laughs> I gave my mom one of these for her birthday and she actually, cr- well, my mom cries about everything, but she did cry because she thought I Like super good gift for grandmas special. and grandpas yeah. too. Yeah. Oh my God, grandmas! This is the ultimate gift for grandmas and grandpas. Yeah, because you can load it. Like, oh, they'll be they'll they'll be so freaked out. Yeah, just we just freak. wake up in the morning and there's a new picture there. Now is a special offer. You can get ten dollars off your purchase of Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter code files F I L E S. That's right. Get ten dollars off your purchase of a Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com and enter code. Files, F-I-L-E-S. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com and use promo code F-I-L-E-S. Single! For all you single-serving lovers out there, Usual Wines is here for you. No, no, no. You no longer can have to feel bad about just wanting to have one glass of wine but not sure if you want to open it up and have it stay fresh. No. Usual Wines in their 6.3-ounce bottles, a heavy pour, or about a glass and a half of wine. No more pouring wine down the sink when you don't want to finish the bottle. Because of the single-serve format and bottle design, Usual is always fresh, no more flat, bubbly, or stale rosé. The wines are low-carb and have zero grams of sugar. What? Zero grams of sugar, you ask? Well, don't grapes contain (laughs) sugar? Well, they do, but in the fermenting process, these grapes are picked at optimal ripeness 
to ensure all sugars will be fermented completely until the wines are dry. No residual sugar. It's tasty, it's wonderful, it's delicious, and you don't have to waste anything anymore. They have a special holiday product that's out now, the usual reserve. It's an ultra premium limited edition Mount Viter Cabernet Sauvignon, introducing usual reserve. It's their most special wine yet, just in time for the holidays. Hailing from one of the most celebrated plots of land in all of Napa, this Cabernet Sauvignon is concentrated and rich. Gift it to someone special or keep it for yourself. The holidays as usual. Go check out their website at www.usualwines.com and use my discount code V-I-A-L-L for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on them. Watching you on this season reminded uh, me a lot of when I was on Andy and Caitlin's season, like the combination of both of just specifically Caitlin's like showing up late, being the outsider, you know, and being friends with a lot of those guys, but like just there's definitely a uh, mob mentality, you know. Yeah. And if you're, um, and and people kind of go with whatever they think is the popular thought or the idea or the safe idea, and and uh, you were, it's it's hard to be an outlier in that world. It's it's hard to think for yourself. And I'm not talking about producers. I'm more talking about the pressure you feel from the house, right? The, yeah. You know, go, it's like showing up to a new high school uh, and, and wanting to be liked and, and make friends. So you just kind of become agreeable, right? What they don't show is that I did actually have relationships with some of the guys. And yeah, we were super I have close. no doubt you did. Yeah. But a lot of the guys that I was in relationship, like had like friendships with were more quiet. Or, you know, there's a few of them that'll have my back and are outspoken, you know, Ivan, Riley, DeMar, Spencer, and, and Chasen, you know, I was cool with, but like mostly Ivan, Riley, and DeMar, uh, they were outspoken, you know, like, yeah, Bennett's a dick, Ed, we don't know what he's doing, but for the rest, it was Bennett in the house versus a bunch of the guys in the middle that were back and forth, and then me and a few people. But yeah, if you, it, it's the mob mentality, if you don't do what they say, you know, you're somehow in the wrong and everyone agrees with it. You know, like it could be a complete lie and everyone will agree with it. Can you help us understand? I know like recently Tasha was on Ellen and she mentioned that her most awkward conversations were with Spencer. But this is a guy <laughs> who, you know, apparent like he's a very attractive guy like you. You both came in late and you both came in hot, right? Like Spencer was like probably came in a little hotter than you with his line and got the first impression rose. And yeah. you know, a lot of people thought you and Spencer were going to kind of take over the show, uh, thought you and Spencer were going to take over the show and you keep, you know, standing up for what you believe and, and not, it would have been down. nice to have Spencer there the whole time, but I'm going to be honest. Spencer, I'm, I'm Spencer was my roommate. Okay. So you know how it is with the roommates, the mics are off. It's just gossip, you know, and you freaking stay up all night. Like, little school girls and, and giggle and gossip. Spencer was my boy, but I kept saying Spencer got shut up from the guys. And then he really, I'm telling you, they just put him in a corner and he kind of accepted that. And I'd always be like, dude, Spencer, like say something or like, don't let him shut you up. It makes you look like, yeah, I don't know, it, it makes you look kind of weak. And if you do like Tasha, like, honestly, I think you and me could take the whole house. Honestly, I told him that I'm like, we could take the whole house uh we don't have to be like go out of our way and be a bunch of like idiots but these guys like we could handle these guys just keep speaking up for what you want and came in keep going hot like you came in and he didn't he kind of like i think they got to him and he kind of got shut up by riley, i think riley got to him and riley called him like a baloney listen sandwich. i was there for that they didn't show the stuff i said when riley was going at him i was like oh spencer's done. yeah this is a uh a Chicago, you know, a dude from Chicago that's an attorney. And then Kenny also was the one that was like, yeah, Spencer, you're a dickhead. And like three other people chimed in and Spencer at that time looked at me and was like, kind of like, you going to help me? And I kind of said like, this isn't my battle. The only thing Whoa, I did wait, say, you didn't you help your boy. Well, I did, but I, the only thing I said was like, dude, you guys are judging Spencer and you don't even know him. You're calling him a dickhead because he's, he made some joke, which honestly was funny. What he said, it I was thought it was funny. funny. It's hilarious. It sounded like, and we what we saw is that while you might not have been Tasha's person, you guys had seemingly some sort of real connection. Like when you talked to Tasha, it seemed like you felt validation from her. There was you gave a, a little bit, she gave some back, and it felt like you were 
basing it on that. And so you were, it sounded like, it seemed like you were willing to continue to push back on these guys and fight because you felt validated by the, what seemed to be your sincerity about going for Tasha. You referenced that a couple times already in the conversation. And I guess based off of what we're hearing from Tasha on Ellen is that there, other than the first impression rose and thinking Spencer was really hot, like there wasn't much a connection. So here Spencer just like, I don't know. I don't know if I really like this girl. She doesn't like me. These yeah. guys hate me. And so fuck it. Like, I'm just whatever. I'm not going to be an asshole. He was kind of like, I mean, he was put in a corner. They shut him up. He's like, I got to be careful now. And I think in doing so, he also questioned if he liked Tasha or not, sure. you know, and that's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Like, why am I like, I'm just, I'm just here. Uh, I think she, that's why it was awkward. Like, you know, she thought he was a good looking guy, but he's like, she said the same thing to me that she said to him. You remind me of my exes. And oh, I called makes, her out on it. Yeah. I, I didn't take that. I told her, well, I mean, I told her, Hey, if you want me, cause I do like you, if you want us to work out, um, here's, you, you can do this, but if you want us to never work out or any relationship at all to never work out, quit comparing people to your exes. I'm not your ex. Like, I called her out, uh, and Spencer said she said the same thing to him, you know, just the SoCal boy. Uh, so she kind of – that's she got that vibe from both of us. I heard that uh, uh, Spencer's so good-looking that he just probably has never had to try for anything in his life when it comes <laughs> to relationships. And so that makes sense if he shows up, he gets some early validation. He's like, yeah, I'm used to this. Like, I'm used to this, like, show up, smile, say hi, Get a first he doesn't impression. have to do much. He doesn't have and, to say Yeah, anything. and then these, then all of a sudden, Riley, probably for the first time in his life, you know, Riley yells at him the way Riley did, and then he's just like, I don't know, Tasha seems cool, but like, you know, probably not my person. It's not and he worth just, it. And he just <laughs> and he folded. Yeah. He folded, and and you didn't. So is that because you know I've been saying like you and I similar in the sense that like you know you you come from a large family, you got to fight for your bowl of cereal, let alone a little attention from a, from a, a lady you like, do you, do you think there's a correlation there or like, what's the difference between you and Spencer in that regard of, of not being intimidated by someone who's just coming at you for no reason? So I think the difference between us is, has nothing to do or ha it only has to do with how we grew up. Yeah. I grew up with 10 brothers and sisters. We always had foreign exchange students in our house. Um, seven brothers. And you know, my parents weren't rich. Like we were poor. Like me and my twin were paying for our own or high school at 16 kind of thing. Like if you want something, you fight for it, you get it. Um, but you don't just do it like arrogantly and blindly. That's what, like I check myself every night. That's why like after I'd gotten a fight with every guy in the house, I checked myself. I was like, are you in the wrong? And I never thought I was in the wrong. So I was like, no, I'm not going to put up with this. Like these are just like, this is middle school drama from a bunch of grown men and I haven't done anything wrong. So, you know, I didn't think I was in the wrong. So I grew up like you fight for what you want and uh, you get it. And if you can't get it, you you put in everything you could, you know, but I think that's the only difference between Spencer and I is how we grew up. Yeah. I was critical of you last week in the sense that uh, when Tasha said, I don't think you were ready for marriage, you walked away. She comes back. You're smiling. I mean, granted, that's just like you know, them showing you smiling or whatever they, they, you know, clearly the show, you don't have to comment, wanted to make, you know, you look like this kind of the Tic Tacs. You know, dude. Yeah. I the fuck the boy, tic the Tic Tacs, the, the, the smirky grins, the awkward smiles, blah, blah, blah. Like that's not on you. But I, I, what I, what I was critical of is that it seemed like you didn't really push back at the time. Now, did you have, were there conversations at, at all that you had with Tasha? Uh, about you not being ready for marriage and and why like why did she keep you around if she thought that was a legitimate concern so it's the same answer with how it all started how it all started was when i went up to tasha was like hey these guys are questioning the rose and all i wanted to ask her was if it's legit like did you just give this to me as some gimmicky little rose i'll go home like i don't care to be here but if it's not you know i'll stay and ignore the dudes whatever it blew out of proportion it turned into this whole thing um, so when Tasha said I wasn't ready for marriage, but then still kept me, that made no sense to me. Uh, like to me, for one, I think Bennett got in her head. Then it warped her. He talked to her for like 35 minutes. He's a manipulative dude. 
it showed that she shut him up. No, she was so confused. I saw the look in her eyes after she talked about it. She was so confused. Um, so I thought she was honestly confused about what she wanted to do, where she was in the show, the feelings she had. To me, she said she had feelings for me, but I made her nervous. Like she like wasn't sure if I was more than like, I'm a high risk, high reward kind of guy. It's kind of how it was equated. So when she said that you weren't ready for marriage, but she still kept me, I was confused. It made no sense to keep me there. So I, it didn't show that I talked to her. I did talk to her like, what are you talking about? I'm not ready for marriage, but I'm still here. Like, send me yeah, what'd home. You, what'd you say to her? Send me home. Yeah, I said, send say? me home. I what'd said, why say? don't you send me home? What'd she say? She, well, she, uh, I'm trying to think exactly what she said. She basically was like, I don't want to send you home. So okay. I'm like, all right, now I'm in this weird juxtaposition where you say, like, I think she said I'm not ready for marriage because she had her doubts and insecurities about me. Um, but she did, ha she knew she had a connection with me. Like, I did have a chance where I'm like, I don't, you can say I'm not ready for marriage. I'm exactly in my life where I want to be for another person to come in and I'll take care of them and we'll have a great life. Like I told her all the things that objectively put me ready for marriage and subjectively I thought I was further than a lot of those, you know, guys that said they're ready for marriage, you know? Um, so I did have a conversation with her and her response. It was always like a confusing response. And to me that spoke that she didn't really know like she was just confused yeah but i told her to send me home i'm like send me home honestly like i'm not gonna leave because i do have feelings for you and i know you have feelings for me but what's the, what are we doing right now what is this like i don't know how to navigate this and it was awkward it was so awkward i didn't kiss her i didn't kiss her for like a few days and i'm like this is weird i don't know what to do but we're both still here did you think when you when you got sent home were you kind of expecting it um, all right. So once Bennett came back, that's when I knew, okay, all the cards are off the table. I'm done for. Like, I thought Bennett's gone. Uh, thank God I can finally focus on there. Once Bennett and Ed left, there was no drama in the house was like a, a paradise, dude. It was an oasis. <laughs> no drama. All the guys are cool. We're all chilling. It's great for friends. you. Bad for the show. Noah. Yeah. Great for me. Bad for the show. Uh, no, Bennett left and I'm like, great. Tasha and me can focus on things that aren't related to drama in the house because I got no chance if I'm always in drama. So when Bennett came back, I was like, all right, I said one of us is going home and I hope Bennett doesn't cause hell on his way out. It's exactly what he did when he came back. Like, I don't, there's no way I can get out of this. I, I knew I was going home. I started cheers into the boys. I'm like, boys, it's been a good run. <laughs> like, I just thought there's no way that Tasha keeps me after this you know, with Bennett coming back and, and those four guys still there. All right. Interesting. I How put did my you hands up, up on it. Yeah. How'd you end up on the show? Uh, so I, my little sister actually nominated me. She was uh, at a bachelorette party with her friends. She called me and was like, Hey, we want to put you on the bachelorette. And uh, I was like, all right. Like I, I didn't think it would actually happen. I'm like, all right, sure. Whatever. I sent them money for Margs. I'm like, have fun. Uh, sure. And I get a call two weeks later. And I'm in California doing a uh, nursing contract. And they're like, hey, your profile came across. We want to interview you. <laughs> I, was like, I still didn't think it was happening. So I got off shift. I drove there, um, like stopped at the mall on the way and got closed. It's my fifth shift straight. I'm like so cracked out on coffee that I'm sweating when I'm sitting there, dude. I'm just a mess. <laughs> didn't interview for two hours. And they're like, hey, if you're serious about this, we want you. And I'm like, if it actually happens, I'm, I'm serious about it. But if not, like, I didn't think it would actually happen. Sure. Yeah. Why didn't she nominate your twin brother? He's married. Oh, okay. That, that might be sense. a dicey. I mean, that could be dicey. Listen, for, we're at the point where that might makes... make for great TV and the people might like it. But Did you ever say my twin's married and he's ready for marriage and I, and we're twins. So <laughs> <laughs> like the apple doesn't fall. Like That's, we're, we're, we're basically the, the same twin card. Yeah. Are you identical or are not? No, we're fraternal. Okay. Uh, so you can't really yeah. say like we're basically the same DNA minus like maybe. If I'm pulling the, hey, look at my twin. My twin's ready for marriage. If I'm having no, to bring people in, I'm way off. The, like, yeah. get me out of there. Where do you fall uh, in line in your, like what, where you and your twin? Uh, I'm in the you? middle. I think we're, I got to count. This is funny. Uh, seven and six. <laughs> I'm in the middle. You're, you're in the middle. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, we're 26. Um, there's an 18 year old and a 35 year old. How'd you get into nursing? Um, 
it sounds funny. I was always told I should. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like the show, you know, I'm like, all right, yeah, sounds cool. But then once I'm here, I'm, I'm in, you know, but, uh, I was just like, based off my personality, I like to help people. Um, the freedom that comes with it. Uh, I was like, yeah, I'll try it. And I applied and they're like, you can't get in. I was 18 at the time because we were kind of a, a little bit ahead because we were homeschooled, which makes a lot more sense now to everybody. But, uh, Wait, wait, wait. Why does that, like, why, <laughs> why, wait, why does that, why, why does that make sense? Why did, Dude, you know, homeschoolers, listen, they give us a bad rep. Yeah, no. But I know. my family, I'll say this, my family, I grew up driving in a big red van. All of us would get out like the Brady Bunch. We all freaking wore matching clothes. Like we were that stereotype for a while. Um, yeah, it's my, my, my life. Dude. Did you homeschool? People don't creep too hard. <laughs> did you homeschool all the way through? I uh, went to a small private school freshman and half a sophomore year. And then we started doing concurrent classes in college. My dad was like, all right, you guys can like dick around in high school. And cause we were repeating classes with concurrent classes. Cause it counts high school and college. It's like you guys can dick around in high school or just go to college. So we were like 16. We we're like, I don't know, Aaron, do you want to go to college? He's like, yeah, sure, dude. And I'm you guys like a went, Bieber so, haircut, dude. I'm I'm like have the Bieber haircut. I was like sick. I was super short at the time. He was like four inches taller than me. Uh, so we just started. Wait, so going you to had a twin college. who was four inches taller than you. Yeah, it sucked, dude. Yeah, what'd you I was a lot from? faster than him. But in sports, yeah, the man. <laughs> if I we fought all the time. If I had to fight him, I'd have to fight dirty. Like go for throat jabs. That, that makes that to me gouge, that ex- the, gouge the eyes or throw rocks or like he was so much bigger than me forever. That explains so. more than anything your willingness <laughs> to to not back down in the house. Yeah, <laughs> you had a twin who was four inches taller than you. Yeah, most I think he was of your like four. Adolescent life is he still and taller? Definitely. Than you? No, I think uh, we're like six foot. Um, he's. I mean, we're about the same height. I might be a yeah. little taller now. But, but he had 10, 15 pounds on me too. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. Then seven so, brothers, my seven brothers, dude, they were, they would just beat us up for the heck of it. You know? So I'm not, this is not anything new to me. So wait, you went to college at 16? Uh, we started concurrent classes at 16. I don't know what that is. Then, what is, what is concurrent uh, that's classes? like you, you go to the community college, you can skip high school, go to the community college and you get high school and college credits. So we were doing, by the time I was 18, I was done with all my prereqs. Wow. So then that's when I got into nursing. So you've been a nurse for how long? Since 2016. I I never even think about it. I've been traveling for the last three. Interesting. Travel nursing. And you're uh, on the front lines of COVID. Yeah, I've been in this since last December. Uh, You've been doing this since last December. I was doing this. At first, they didn't call it COVID, and then it started to this, they started to call it COVID, but it was nothing big. Um, then we started testing heavily for COVID, and we're like, oh, this has been the same thing. Um, yeah, I, up until the show, that's because when it was clear, I found out it was clear. And I'm like, all right, listen, I told myself I'm ready for this because I am. You know, I, I think I'm ready. So then I find out it's clear. I'm like, she's 39. Uh, her personality is in mine. I, I can't tell what she's like. So I'm like, but I'm going to just show up and do it. And then we were at the hotel and they canceled it because of COVID. We we're supposed to go to the mansion that like the next day. So wait, you were so, on, you were in the original lineup. Yeah. I was in the original, the first casting. So then when it got canceled, I was like, dude, I'm just going to get back to work, get back to my normal life. You know, I was like, if it happens, it happens, but like, I'm not going to put my life on hold for this. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I don't know. I didn't think it would happen the second time around. Interesting. And then you was Spencer part of the original lineup too, like you guys showing no, up. No, Spencer li- was later on. Okay. That's why it's all they, it's all interesting to me. I mean, they knew yeah, my they, personality. I came in hot, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, Spencer, uh, I think came on later. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and they probably found Spencer, you know, in the time they had off, and and uh, you know, you 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 two were probably better suited for Tasha anyways, right? So it makes a lot of sense why you guys showed up when you did. And probably to your benefit, like, yeah, it, it totally, it totally worked out for the TV standpoint. Cause had you showed up early on in Claire's dude, I would have turned into a Yosef, not as bad <laughs> as Yosef, but I would have got so fed up 
with Claire's like nonsense, dude, I would have been pissed off. Like watching, that's why I said looking back, watching the guys, the guys look terrible and it's not their fault. They just look like they're getting toyed around with. I'd ended up getting pissed off. Or Claire would have liked that I'm like a younger guy that fights for her and I would have made it like far. But I think I would have gotten sent home and then I would have never met Tisha. So let me ask you let me ask you this. You just you you vaguely try to defend Yosef. I want to give you an opportunity to Oh no. I'm not be defending clear Yosef. about I, and I don't know. Like do you think in any way he got a bad rap or or so are you saying you appreciate why Yosef was frustrated, but how he handled his frustration, maybe you don't know. I said that. this at the mentel all because Yosef's there. I said, listen, dude, I don't know you. I only saw what I saw. I don't fault you. Like he's, not, I'll defend him. In fact, that he spoke up to her like, Hey, I think this is wrong. If he would have only said that he'd have been cool. Then when he starts bringing up, like he went so far left about how she's the oldest, his daughter should never meet her. He just kept going and going and going. And that's where he looked like a dick. And then he defended himself. You know what the mental all he got crucified. Oh, I Even Chris Harrison roasted him. Yeah, I couldn't and, believe it. And he wouldn't back up what he said. So there's no way I'll defend Yosef on that. I'm just saying if I was in Yosef's position, I would have been pissed off. I'd have been frustrated. I can't blame him for that because they were getting toyed around with by Claire. Like blatantly. You know, we, we have the final three. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Ben. Who do you think uh, is right for Tasha? Like for someone who had a connection with Tasha. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on the rest of the season going forward as, as you see it right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the funny thing is I had conversations with all these guys. I talked to Ben by the pool actually. Um, and he brought up the same things he brought up to Tasha, and I like kind of consoled in him. Like, dude, it's a big deal. You know, um, you know, the suicide. You're referring to, yeah, suicide. Yeah, to Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm referring to like the, the, a lot of the mental illness and things he talked about. We had conversations. Um, the thing I didn't like Ben is he kept trying to like, for some reason, put me under his wing. He said this in another podcast. He saw a younger version of himself. I'm like, dude, you're four years older than me. I'm not a younger version of yourself. Uh, so that was the only thing that got me annoyed with Ben. But we talked about a lot of this stuff by the pool. And I think he's a good guy, you know, a cool guy. He's he's interesting. And I I wanted to know what his conversations with Tasha were like. Because to me, I was you, like, why do you say that? It's just because Taisha actually didn't open up a lot to the guys. A lot of it was Taisha listening. Um, and I don't fault her for that because she's the bachelorette. You can't open up to every so single guy. J just to but, play devil's advocate, though, like, how do you know that? Like, how do you know about Taisha's conversations with the other guys? Is it because that's what you I know heard? that because, dude, we would get, I'm in the top five. Right. I'm having conversations, you know, with some of the guys and like Ben never knew she was divorced and he's top four. And I'm like, OK, like, <laughs> really? what else don't you know? I'm like, what have you guys talked about? You're this far. What have you talked about? A lot of the information, like these are the top five, four guys. We're all talking about Tasha and they have no idea some of the stuff like Ivan and I are talking about. We know way more about her life and some of the stuff she told me, they had no idea. And I'm like, all right. You guys are front runners i consider myself a front runner until bennett came back um like i was just i didn't know what they talked about so i started to realize that taisha might like ben has a lot of history a lot in his past and stuff like that i kind of assumed like taisha kind of just listens like taisha's going to be just listening to him she's not dishing out stuff as much and then watching the show i kind of see that yeah well so do you feel like that's on taisha or do you think it's on the guy's not asking Tasha questions because I feel like you, it sounds like, you, you know, you are clearly a great conversationalist. You uh, have had a unique life. You've ha you have this large family. You, you have interpersonal skills, right? And so it sounds like you're aware to like in a day. I wish I was the most that, intelligent though, man. I yeah, wish I was. Yeah. It would help me to have uh, self-awareness. <laughs> you got some, I like you're a, you have some bitter snark in you. I, I enjoy that. <laughs> uh, but do you put that on the guys or do you put that on Tasha? Or who do you it put it on both? Because it's fair It's fair to criticize yeah, both, both, but but who do you think it was more... Do you think it was... Because like in that situation, P Tasha has the power. As the bachelorette, it's a very intimidating atmosphere. Sometimes you don't know, like, do I just answer questions? Or do I get to ask? You you obviously are one of those people in that show who really understood. I'm not, I'm not going to ask for permission. I'm just going to do what I want. And someone will let me know if I should like do it differently. 
right? But in that world, it's it's hard to do. A lot of people show up or just like, I don't know, what 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 do you what do you what do you what do you want me to do? So who do you think's more to blame? I think if we're going 50-50, I have to blame Tasha. Um, because you know how it is. The guys know, okay, I got a little bit of time. I'm gonna basically like checklist, say some things about me so that I have an impression on Tasha. Then he, as you get further along, you're like, okay, she knows a bit about me. Now we can start having real conversations. Um, but honestly, she, I will play devil's advocate because she is a good listener. Mm -hmm. But I also think that, you know, if you're getting that far along with some of these guys, you should be telling them some stuff about you, you know? And, and like, I'm, it's she wild more like, to me that Ben it had no just, idea. Yeah. That she was, into, I, I don't want to say a therapy session, but it turned into like a, a 30, 70 combo. Like the guys are 70%, Tasha's 30%. I, I, I just want to put a timestamp on this because I can only imagine this episode airs and then you can get a lot of people trying to defend certain things. So when specifically did you have that conversation with Ben? At what point then, and that he acknowledged that he had no idea that Tasha had been married before? Oh, well, here, listen, you're going to want to ask Ivan about it because me and Ivan towards the end, we were super close. And uh, me and Ivan are talking about our, some of our things about Tasha and random things. And we were all sitting in the hub. I don't remember exactly when it was, but it was very far into, into the end of the show. We were like, yeah, dude. I said like, yeah, she got divorced when she was my age. Cause her and I had a long conversation with Blake, like before Blake's one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'm like, yeah, she got divorced at my age. And, and I understand why she's got hesitations with me and stuff like that. And then Ivan said something and, and I don't remember if it was Ivan or Ben, but I'm pretty sure it was Ben was like, she was married or it was something like that where Ben said something and me and Ivan were both like, wait a minute, you don't know she's married. Like, and he just had a one-on-one -on -one and I'm like, how? But like, when, when was this? But is, was this like the first week or was this like, no, no, this is top five. This is me. Then it's home. This is top five. This is so it's down to five, far, and Bennett and Ben and Ben five. says yeah. this, and it's Ben. Yeah, ben didn't know she was married. Okay, wow. And I mean, I'm only doubling down on this because I remember that Ivan brought it up because I had s said some conversations about Tayshia. I was like, "What are some of these guys talking about?" And then looking back, it's the same with Zach. I'm like, I just wanted to like they're the ones doing all the talking. What do they actually know about Tayshia? Well, did, but did Zach say anything that would make you Zach's question? A, Zach's, Zach's a smart, quiet guy. Uh, he just he sits kept and to observes. himself. He didn't yeah. talk about he didn't talk about him and Tasha much at all. He like deflected that. I mean, he was like, "I don't care what you guys are talking about." You know, he was very quiet with about Tasha. Oh, well, that makes sense to me. That usually, in, in my experience, that that tells me that he took that relationship very seriously. And it was probably different than the rest, he, at least from Zach's point of view. I, my guess is Zach felt like his connection with Tasha was drastically different than anyone else's. And we all did, though. Everybody did. No, I know and everyone Zach, does, Zach, but Zach's the guy, though. Zach's the guy that Tasha probably needs, but she might not necessarily want. I mean, she wants, like, she's had the loud guy. She's had the fun, crazy ones. Not saying Zach's not fun and crazy, but he's older. He's not like, I mean, he's not changing much. I mean, Zach is Zach. Uh, like, I felt like she was trying to want Zach, and she knew he's best for her. That's kind of what I thought. She was like, this guy's safest, best for me, which isn't bad, but, you know, you could tell she want like, she entertained, she wanted the opposite kind of guy as well. You know, what about, younger, what about Brendan? Uh, dude, I think, so after the first one-on-one, -on -one, she was head over heels in Brendan. Everybody knew it. We were like, oh, Brendan's got this in the bag week one. Really? Uh, yeah, everybody knew it. But then Brendan fell off. Like, we, like Brendan fell off with Tasha. honestly. That's why we kind of thought Brendan was going home <laughs> towards the middle. Because we were like, she had that, with, that spark with him. But now it's like, what's happened since that first week? Now it's like three weeks later, however long it's been. So from... Are, are I think he fizzled out at the end. If that's what you're asking. Okay. But he's still there. So maybe something happened after you left. Okay. I don't know. See, I don't know what happened once I left. I, yeah, I, yeah. I no, only yeah. know like. But it's what you saw. What you saw like is. Zach was head over yeah. heels. Ben, I felt like was trying to convince himself that he wanted. I'm not saying he didn't like her. 
he wanted to convince himself that he wanted to like somebody like Ben, ben. was yeah Ben yeah but what and about so like Brandon like I'm watching it and I'm Brandon I think his, fizzled out yeah but do you is there a chance because you know he's still there he's top three he could still win this thing uh you know and and fairness to you Noah there's a lot that you don't get to see right like even yeah. when you're on the show like you're clearly very observant but like maybe Brandon like I know that there's things that you don't know and I know this because like after I got off the show like some of the guys like I remember having conversations with my friends uh, like my the best example is my buddy Jared who was on Caitlyn's season with me right he was top four he was very into Caitlyn and then when we met up after the show I like told him everything and his mind was blown by like because I just didn't share a lot right at at the time and he just made a yeah. lot of assumptions and what he saw was you know his version of that you know everyone has their own version so is there any chance that that and from from that now that you left that Brandon is, Brendan is he was just more quiet and and stayed he stayed out of the drama meanwhile while you're there it was a lot of Bennett and Noah arguing and that you just didn't have time to pay attention to the connection he was building with Tasha, or you, you of course no, no, of course there's that chance. There's like, so much that goes on that I didn't see, but Brandon's the most chill dude on the show by far. He's just chilling always. Um, but I start, I think that based off of our conversations, he started to realize like, all right, I've already been engaged. I've already been married. It was tough. I'm about to do a blind shot in the dark for another engagement that I'm going to have to get my family involved. And I think Tasha had these same thoughts. Like, it's getting real now. Like as the end, you could tell Brendan something switched where he's like, Oh, it's getting real now. Like, do I really want this? That's just what I thought. I don't know what they talked no, about. It's I don't a, know. it's a very, I can't in, tell. It's a very interesting I, dynamic. Go ahead. What I do know is like, they showed a clip of me saying, um, if anything, I'm just getting started. I'm a double down. Sure. And it made it look like I was talking about being the villain. Yeah. Yeah, what I right. was talking about was like, Hey, listen, if all of us are being serious with ourselves, we think we're going to get engaged. Like, why don't we act like we already are? Like, why are we dicking around with all this stuff? Like, I'm just getting started. Tasha's going to know exactly how I am. And I'm going to, like, I'm going to set the bar high. And I expect you guys to set the bar higher. And we just keep doing this. Zach was one that ran with that. Ben was run that one that ran with that. You see that. Um, Ivan, the man was smooth the whole time, but on the low key. But he realized he wasn't the only one in the game. And Brendan, I think, was kind of like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to double down on that or not. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense, right? And it works. Like, in that world, you kind of have to just say, fuck it, I'm going to go for this. Like, you can be the, like, this is crazy, this is weird, like, I don't know if I can do this, but, like, you just decide to say, I'm going to go for it and, and see what happens. And the, that, it's it's interesting the one that you said yeah. that. The one thing that I was happy about is, I told Tayshia, like, listen, you're getting all of me. You're getting the good, the bad. And I, I was the only contestant that had an argument in an awkward situation with Tayshia. Situation with Tayshia. And I'm like, this is, about, this is what real life is going to be like. I want to know how she handles conflict. Uh, like, but she's going to know exactly how I am. Like, I don't care. And if she doesn't like me, she'll send me home. And, you know, obviously no, I, I get sent home in the end. But I, I, I don't have regrets no. about any of it. No, you know? I, I, I love that. I think that's great. I think you, you played it well. Um, and I think, you know, I hope to see you on Paradise. My guess is you'll get an opportunity. And if you are asked to go on, do you, would you, do you plan on going, going on? I think I will. Um, okay. I need some sleep and I need to like work out a little before, but you know, <laughs> why not? What, where I'm at yeah. is why not? Like, unless between now and then I find some girl that I like fall madly in love with and I'm, head over heels and that's that's the only reason i wouldn't do it well i, I don't I see think, that happening uh, i think you should go if you're asked i think you will find that you probably have a really good time and you're a perfect example of someone who goes on the show and like i called you a manufactured villain last week like you're clearly not like you're not like a you're a bad dude like you're can, you can be abrasive you can be aggressive and some people can find that to be off-putting or standoffish but like clearly talking to you you have you're you're an ex interesting guy you're probably someone who's a lot of fun to hang around with chris harrison loves you um and if you go on the show it's those type of personalities that over time people get to see 
all of you, right? Like not everyone's going to listen to this podcast, right? Who watches the show, even though they should, but like the people who, should. the people, <laughs> go, the people like who only watched, you know, you on the bachelorette and they're like, I don't know about that. Noah guy. Like you'll hopefully go on paradise and they'll see a different side of Noah. Not that you right. know yeah. anything about that. They'll Nick. get to know no more of yeah, Noah. Right? And I think, uh, I think, it, I think paradise will, will serve you, serve you well. Uh, I, mean, but, I hope so. That's, that's why I like doing these podcasts, like talking to you. Like people have only seen me basically be a dick or some like freaking conniving little tool. I don't know. I like was stirring the pot the whole time. They see me doing all these smug. I make a weird face apparently on TV. A smug like smirk all the time. Like, oh, I'm going to get you guys. Like, I like that I'm able to at least show more about me. And I yeah, said that to like, and like would you, I wish you would, could see more about me. Would you agree? And I'm just, you know, would you agree that even though it was like, an isolated part of you, right? And that's what they showed over and over, like the smug looks. Like you have that ability to be that person, right? Like you. <laughs> what I mean, yes and no, yes or no. Like yeah, you of did, course I do. The, here's course, what I realized yeah. about the show: the show like condenses life into this month or two months, and your real side will show out, and sides that you didn't know will show. Like yeah. apparently, I can be a little prick sometimes. I didn't know that, but I now I know. Now I can get the smug little like want to punch me in the face look now i know you know i'm sure it's already been there i just haven't seen it i've never been there on tv go. it's it, it is interesting before like uh, before i let you go that you the the thought about you mentioned brendan and, and Tasha is that it's clear that Tasha and i think and i've said this before like i mean i i think Tasha very much likes the idea of things right you know she uh the way things look i think matter to Tasha more than the other person she's certainly not the only one we all like how things look right i mean that's the, yeah. but i think Tasha a lot and so and and like a lot of people Tasha judges herself for being divorced you know more probably more yeah. than she should but there is a stigma she she even plays into it herself and so you know she gets the call to be the bachelorette oh yeah of course yeah wait i'll when, when, when do you need me there? Right. She shows up. It's great. And now, like you said, it's, it's getting real for Tasha, Right. And now it's like, fuck, you know, I'm going to get engaged to one of these guys. Family's going to be involved and, too. And I want yeah, it to work mess. and I don't want this to not work. And I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if Tasha thinks a failed engagement is as much of a scarlet letter as a failed marriage. It's not, you know, and I hope Tasha doesn't judge herself for that, but I can see her, being hypercritical of of herself and, and her choices, and and uh, I think that will be interesting. And it is interesting that you have someone like uh, Brendan who's similar in that regard, in terms of just self conscious about uh, you know his past and and wanting it to work out. And yeah, it's it, it gets real fast at the at the at the end. Uh, you don't yeah, like, really you're, think you're about like it. it's a show, right? You're like it's a show, but then when you get to the end, you're like, no, this is real actually. I mean, there's going to be a ring involved. And I do think Taysha, just like Brendan, I think Taysha showed up wanting to fall in love, do the whole thing right. I said on my way, or towards the end of my time there, I told Ivan, because I talked to him a bunch, I'm like, dude, listen, she's, I know she wants this to work out and wants to be in love and all these things, but she doesn't know what she wants right now, honestly. I could tell that, and I'm not going to fault Bennett or any, it, the whole process, I could tell it's getting real for her. I don't think she knows what she wants. And I don't think she's the only one. And I kind of think Brandon was the same. All right. Uh, no, we're going to play a quick little game with you before we let you go. It's called Do You Know Me? It's real simple. <laughs> I'm going to ask right. you a, a question. Does Noah this? Does Noah that? Has Noah ever this? Don't answer the question right away. Chrissy and I are going to guess the answer. And then after we guess, you let us know who's right or wrong. If you have an anecdotal story, uh, feel free to share. Um, you Or you can just simply answer Yes or no. All right, all right. I like uh, it. Chris is smiling. <laughs> Question number one. Has Noah ever been to the hospital from drinking too much? Has Noah ever been to the hospital? I'm going to say no. He I'm going to also say no. Can hold his liquor. and uh, Absolutely never, not. Never I would be so embarrassed. I see that in the ER too. And the funny thing is, Tasha just on Ellen said most likely to get drunk on at a rose ceremony is Noah. And I 
think she forgot that Ed was always. I was going to say Ed sure would Ed be my was call. Was not... Freaking asleep or blitz or something. So she said that. I'm like, what? But no, no shot. I'll. I don't drink like that, honestly. I definitely drink, but I'm never like super drunk or anything like that. No shot. Because I Question... work in the hospital. I'd be embarrassed. Question number two Has Noah ever gone to therapy? Not including talking to a therapist on The Bachelor. Uh, um, I'm going to say no. Yeah, I want to say no, but he'll need it in like 10 years. <laughs> yeah, right. He's got enough siblings to be it. his I'm, therapist. Yeah, I'm not above it at all. I feel like I'm normally the one doing the therapy, though. Like, I don't know. I feel like people well, come you to can me. Be- I'm not above it. I just have never been to therapy, no. Sure. Okay. We'll see after this and Bachelor in Paradise and all that, you know. <laughs> Question number three. Has Noah ever had sex on a futon or a bunk bed? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, too. Anybody who went to college did. Or <laughs> if you have a lot of siblings, there's certainly bunk beds involved at some point. You got to you got to sneak around. <laughs> what, so now you're now you're having no, sex I, next to your family. I mean, I have <laughs> never had, I've, I've never had sex. You're in talking my parents about the house. twins? Of course, the twins. No, I never have. Actually, and honestly, that's a whole nother topic. I pretty much didn't have sex for a long time and I. I still try not to, which is funny. Interesting story, you know, different time. But no, I never have. When you say no you try nux, not no to have... No knuckles by twin, you know, having sex on the bunk beds. We never had that. When you say <laughs> you try not to have sex, what do you what do you mean? Uh, it's just personal and kind of religious reasons. And, you know, I'm okay. like, I'm wanting to get married. And I'm, I think, like, having sex isn't hard. Every guy can say that. I want to, like, I want to have sex with my wife and get crazy, you know. We'll stack bunk beds. And have sex on all four. Why did you say that on the fucking Bachelor, <laughs> Noah? I said a lot of things, you know. A lot of it's not all shown. Wow, you want to say that again because the the women want to hear it. Yeah. Well, what about stacking. Oh, listen. I'm no, not, uh, about yeah. about <laughs> saving yourself. You're not. You have. You didn't say. You're not a virgin, right? No, I'm not a virgin. But I just, you, you I want to. I think there's a lot to sex. Like yeah, I'm not okay. someone that just likes to just go have sex. Obviously, I like sex. But I'm not just like having sex, like just because, you know, I, you would, I think it's more special. You than would that. like to save some of those kinky stories for your wife. Yeah, me and my, like every, I reserve a lot for my wife. You Like some random chick's not going to get every side of me. Oh, Noah. Now I'm it, falling in love with Noah. Oh, dang it. Now dang it. and I are in love. Oh, got it. Uh, this is kind of a, pri- uh, well, well. Question number four. Has Noah ever had a broken heart? I honestly don't know about this. I'm going to say yes. yes. Especially after the conversation yeah. we just had. I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say, I mean, I've definitely been in love and I've definitely had a burn. I mean, it depends how far you want to take broken heart. I've definitely felt some, felt some sting and really, you know, been down about, uh, about a person. I, I mean, I get through life. Like to me, I'm like pushed through everything. It doesn't matter. It'll all work out. But I've definitely been, you know, lost some sleep over a girl. Hmm. Which I love my sleep. <laughs> you do. You do. But no sleep loss over Bennett. No, Bennett can, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett lost sleep over me, though, dude. I added wrinkles to those 36 year old, you know, that face. It I just think we'll eats. just end it with a, with a broken heart. Uh, oh, of course you're gonna do that. You're not gonna do a funny one to end it. You're gonna end with a broken you wanna, heart. You want you want a funny one? <laughs> yeah, do something uh, fun. You know. Well, tell us. Okay, I'm Chrissy thinking I'm just broken hearted. Tell pool. us the most. Uh. We won't even go. Tell us the most. What's one thing about yourself? I know it's a bit loaded, but you know the most interesting, fun thing about yourself. You know, here is a show that shows ten percent of your personality. Give us another percent of Noah that we haven't had a chance to to ne- show or appreciate. I think uh, people would be so surprised. Some of my closest friends know this, but people would be so surprised uh, how much of a like deep thinker I am and how analytical I actually am. People think I just do whatever and like just shot from the cannon, you know. But uh, I don't know. I'll stay up all night talking to my friends. Four in the morning talking to my friends. That doesn't surprise stuff. me at all. I'm a lot deeper. I'm, a, I'm yeah. just a lot deeper. I feel like than people would think. Yeah. Like I like to have fun. No doubt about that. But I think I'm a lot deeper than people think. Uh, and I don't well, really I'm glad show you got a chance everybody. to say that. It doesn't surprise me. I've, I've thought that. I mean, again, I thought you handled yourself really well in the tell-all. And uh, yeah, y'all are good at reading people. Not, you guys, you guys do well. 
<laughs> seeing both sides, I'm like, oh, they do pretty good. They, they, I mean, you're you're pretty much spot on almost always. Sixty percent oh. of the time, it works every time. You know, so you're you pretty spot on. That, you want to say that again? I'm 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 spot on all the time. Sixty <laughs> percent of the time. Sixty percent of the time. Every time. Yeah. No, you're pretty spot. I, I'm going to give you like seventy-five, eighty percent. You're pretty like even the behind the scenes stuff. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty good read. I don't know if they have intel or what, but you guys. Just... I've been I've been very spoiled free. I don't really. You, know, you guys I, have a good read. Oh, tell me before even I let some you go. of the stuff about me. I'm like, well, that's pretty good. I mean, uh, you were. Uh, can you take your shirt off for a second? You have a branded. You're, you've been branded. Yes. Oh yeah, I do. Wait, what's happening? How do you know that? How do yeah. you know that? I got some intel over the weekend. Yeah. So they didn't know that. They didn't know that. Uh, it was one of the executive producers that actually was like. Go up like, to the camera. The I can barely see it. All right, hold on. <laughs> oh my God, what is happening? This just turned sultry. You've been branded. Files, files. Yeah, well, you have a cross. You've been branded oh. with a cross. Here. Uh, how, why? Tell us the story. All right, quick story is a uh, road trip with my best friend and my twin across the US. You can't believe my second podcast I've ever been on. I'm shirtless. <laughs> uh, but uh, like, I quit my job. It was before he started college. We had no plans. We were just going to end up in, in California. The whole thing took like a month. Just sleeping in the car, doing crazy stuff. In Sedona, my friend was like, hey, if I buy this brand, will you get a brand? I was like, absolutely not. You know, this is a frat boy too. Everybody, they thought it was fun to get branded. So I'm like, no. So he's like, I'll buy it if you do it. I'm like, all right, fair enough. So that, like two that's... and a half weeks later... Yeah, I'm at ease. I'm like, all right, twist my arm. Yeah, I'll get branded. So like two and a half weeks later, we're on a beach in La Jolla, bonfire, random chicks. A random trucker ended up getting a brand with us, which is another crazy story. Nobody even knew him. He just wanted a brand. Always had since he was like a kid. Uh, but he pulled it out and was like, no, you said. And it was our last night. So we put it in the fire. Uh, my twin and him got each got one on their arm. We all did it to each other. And... Uh, Honestly, my dad, my family, my parents, friends think it's a stupid thing I've ever done. I like it. No tattoos, but I have a brand. No tattoos. So yeah, it's for the memories. And uh, honestly, yeah, it just it's there. It's not going anywhere. X marks the spot. Did, I did, did get you... in the ocean right after. Well, it's kind of cool. Like, it's a cross over your heart. I'm gonna. I dig it. Did it hurt, yeah. man? Or did you have to put like ointment on it? Did it Dude, get right after, like right when it happened, it didn't hurt. Um. But like every day after that, it was terrible because I was playing volleyball and one time my wetsuit got stuck to it while surfing. I had to rip it off. It was miserable after for like two weeks. Um, all, one of the first times I ever cried was because of this brand. I uh, I was making out, kissing this girl and she scratched my back <sighs> and I forgot I had a brand and she went across it and my body like went into shock to start crying. But like it hurt. Yeah. Poor Noah. Did does Tasha know you have a brand? I think she asked about it and I deflected the question. Wow. I don't remember. It's all a blur. <laughs> well, Noah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for being so uh honest with your assessment. Um not only with your time on the show, but uh as as some of the other guys. Um I don't do you do you know the ending? Don't say what it is, but do you know? I don't. I have a hunch. So tell um, me your hunch then. Yeah. If you're spoiled free, I would like to hear. No, what, I don't know what, the ending. I don't okay. know the ending. Then I would like to I hear don't. what you think happens. I think, and I'll leave names out, I guess. Uh, well, or should I not? No, I think you should leave names I think in. She, okay, I think she wants to date Zach. I don't think she ends up engaged. I think she either ends up nothing or is like, okay, I'll date Zach and we'll see if how it works out i couldn't see her getting engaged honestly i mean that makes sense but so you think zach is the winner then okay yeah i don't think it's ivan brendan was i don't think brendan actually towards the end was ready to get married to her and ben will be interesting because i i, I, think, I think ben think comes back ben. ben's been kicked off the show but i'm um, i would be blown away if he doesn't come, come he back. has to she already yeah. called him out for not not uh trying but yeah at the end of the day, I don't think she wants to marry Ben. No, I think it's a good guess. She definitely likes him. But I, I, I would like, probably, I'd different. probably, I'd probably agree with you at this point. 
I think. And you're seventy five percent right, so that means we're pretty good odds. Well, I honestly was shocked. <laughs> I sh- I was shocked Ben went home. I I was shocked. I, I I thought he was top two for sure. If you if you he still if you knew Ben and you knew her and you realize once it starts to get to, down to the nitty and gritty, you wouldn't be surprised. No. Thank you for clearing the air on that because uh, yeah, it's nice to hear those uh, behind the scenes. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. I <laughs> uh, appreciate it. Uh, best of luck. Uh, thank you for uh, on the front lines of fighting COVID. Thanks for doing, you know, for in all seriousness, things that really matter uh, and doing those things. Um, and um, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I thought you guys are awesome. Thanks for having me on here. Uh, I love being able to like actually share what I have to say instead of relying on somebody's edit, you know, but yeah, appreciate you having me on. It was a blast. It was, it was fun to have you. Thanks. You, thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed uh, getting to know, uh, know, know a little better. Uh, big week next week. Uh, a lot of bachelor next week. We uh, will have, be breaking down the last two episodes on uh, Monday. Well, Tuesday night with Sarah Silverman breaking down the finale of the bachelor and on Wednesday's episode, we don't know who it's going to be, but we'll be having a conversation with whoever Tasha's runner-up is. So, and no spoilers, but you think all that the drama ends when Bennett and I go home? It just gets started. It's just a different kind of drama. Great. It's, Can't wait. And uh, whoever Tasha's runner-up is, we will be having the pleasure of speaking with them. Uh, and I think it's an exclusive. Thank you, uh, Warner Brothers, for being so kind to let us have that uh, conversation. Um, other than that, we will uh, send in your questions. Ask Nick at castmedia.com, cast with a K. And if there's nothing else, we will see you on Monday.